This is a production of Speed Sport, America's Motorsports Authority since 1934. Well, hi, everybody. We got some exciting news today. If you love two-wheel racing, the upcoming 50th anniversary season for the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship has just been announced. The 12-race schedule is out. Davey Coombs, you are the man behind it all. This is a very exciting season with it being the 50th anniversary. Yeah, we're very excited. You know, coming off of what I would call the recovery year of 2021, where we got everything back on track the way uh, it was before this crazy pandemic hit. Uh, we had a great, compelling racing, Ralph. We had uh, really good crowds, especially at the places that we didn't get to go to in 2020. So to have a, a complete schedule already lined up for 2022 and to have it be, you know, the 50th anniversary of the, the birth of pro motocross as a series in America, uh, we could not be more excited. Yeah, a lot of folks don't know necessarily the history of motocross. It didn't start here in the U.S., but when it came over here, it took a little bit to catch on. But boy, once it did, it exploded. And this is really the original form of dirt bike racing here in the U.S. Folks hear about Supercross and Arena Cross and Grand National Cross Country and all that. But motocross is really the heart of the sport. I've always said that motocross is the original action sport. Uh, there's probably some surfers out in Hawaii that would argue otherwise. But um, yeah, you know, motorcycling in America, especially after World War II, became more and more popular. And we weren't necessarily doing it in the dirt unless you considered how bad the roads were back then to be uh, scrambling. And, uh, and it really, you know, sort of caught on in the mid 60s when a gentleman named Edison Dye, uh, who was the Husqvarna distributor for the United States, figured that the best way to show folks just how good those bikes were, were to bring the world's best riders over and have a little tour. He called it the Interam Series and Torsten Hallman, who's really the, the, the co-father uh, of pro motocross in America, along with Edison Dye. Um, Torsten was the star and pretty soon they brought other guys over like uh, Joel Robert and Roger DeCoster. And uh, the Americans, you know, learned in a hurry uh, how to get faster. But they always had international series and not a domestic series. And finally, in 1972, uh, the AMA decided to sanction its own national championship as a standalone series. And that's where we sort of have our, our, our birth for Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. And Southern California, a huge part of the history of the sport. And you're going to actually have two races there at the bookends of the championship, 12 races, as we mentioned. Fox Raceway in Pala, California will be the site for rounds one and round 12, correct? Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, I know that everyone would like to see more of a diversity in some of the tracks, but coming off of what we've had the last couple of years, honestly, the, the, the most ideal thing for the teams is to have two races closest to their bases. And Southern California is that base because that was the closest uh, port to the Japanese manufacturers sending the bikes over in the early 70s. So Honda, Kawasaki, Suzuki, Yamaha, all based in California, eventually KTM, and now Husqvarna and Gas Gas followed them out there. And, you know, that's, that's the heart of Supercross. It's the cradle of Supercross, but it's also the cradle, basically, of, or the epicenter of the American motocross industry. And um, because Supercross will end in Salt Lake City the first weekend in May, and the teams want all the time off they can get, we thought that we would be best to start right there in their backyard. So instead of being like a week and a half off and then everyone hustles up to Sacramento for the Hangtown Classic, we're going to start Memorial Day weekend at Fox Raceway at Pala and then fast forward to Labor Day. And uh, Roger DeCoster had called us and said, is there any way you can take the racing as late into September as possible? Because we used to end in August. And the reason was, Roger is 100% dedicated to getting Team USA back on top at the Motocross of Nations. And of course, that takes place at Redbud this year, September 24th and 25th. So we were glad to oblige him. We again said, what do you think about Fox Raceway at Pala? And that makes it easy because they're all coming home to, to get the trucks ready, to flip out the bikes, and then all those rigs, even though there's only going to be probably a dozen AMA riders at the destinations for various countries, uh, all of the rigs will be used because they like to be uh, serve hospitality for the European teams that come over and need a place to work. So 
when we go to Europe, they all help us in Europe. And when they come here, we like to do our best to help those teams out. Yeah, that's going to be one exciting weekend in September at Redbud for sure. Uh, of course, as a kid that grew up in Sacramento, I'm a big fan of the Hangtown race. Went many, many times, even got to announce it a few. Uh, what other stops on the tour are you really looking forward to this year, Davey, or should the fans earmark for a particular reason? Well, honestly, I believe that, you know, to your point, Hangtown, you know, I always love saying motocross starts at Hangtown because that was our traditional opener. But la this past year, because of the situation in California, you know, there's a, you know, a strange dichotomy going on of what's open and what's not open. Hangtown, who had to miss altogether in 2020, asked if they could go last. So it was kind of a big risk for the dirt diggers because uh, they were used to being at the very beginning of the schedule. And it turned out that we had one of the biggest Hangtown races ever. Uh, real, uh, the, the, the fans were more than happy to, to come in September as compared to May or June. And so when we were putting the schedule together, we asked them, would they like to go last, like September 11th, September 12th, or would they like to go earlier? And they chose to go second. So that also makes it easy on the teams and the riders because, I and mean, that's just a milk run up the five to, <laughs> to go from uh, Fox Raceway to, to you know, Prairie City. So, um, you know, and, and, and the series really starts when they start to leave California. Everyone's got Supercross out of their system. You're starting to see guys emerge. Uh, the third round of Colorado will be amazing, same as last year. And then from there, it, I think, you know, there's not a weak link on the schedule. We, we, we're, we're so glad to have, you know, the 11 facilities that, that, that we had back in tw or 2019, um, at least, you know, without, with the exception of the race in Florida, tried as hard as I could to make a national work in Florida between June and August, but Ralph, you're down there for races all the time. Yeah. It's hot. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't do this under the lights. So, no. um, so, uh, but we're looking in the Southeast. We're, we're, we always got our eyes open uh, for a return that, you know, it's a funny, you know, thing that probably the, the, the capital, the de facto capital of amateur motocross in America is the Southeast. Yeah. That's the one area that we don't have a pro motocross round at right now. And then, of course, last year you had a French rider win the big category and an Australian rider win the smaller category. So are we going to see the Americans back on top getting ready for the motocross of nations as well? Or do you think Dylan Ferrandez and uh, Lawrence will be right back where they left? Well, I can tell you that both of those guys earned their championships. Uh, Dylan was hand down the fastest 450 rider all summer long, from, from literally from the get-go. And I, ironically, Jet won the opener in the 250 class. And, uh, you know, he's he they're both a pleasure to be around. They, they're so enthusiastic to be here. Uh, they're also incredibly smart with how they market themselves. Uh, so I have a hard time rooting against anyone. But the Des Nations, uh, yeah, I'm all about Team USA for that. But I also like to see the AMA guys do better. But I know that with, you know, Eli switching teams, Jason Anderson switching teams, with Cooper Webb is going to be 100% ready when outdoors start next year. Aaron Plessinger's on a new team. Uh, I think both classes are going to be wide open. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a resurgence of number three. But it's going to be weird seeing them in blue. That it is for sure. Well, Davey, we can't wait for the season to kick off the 50th anniversary of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. It all comes your way starting at Palo Raceway or at Fox Raceway out in Palo, California. And when, what's the uh, opening weekend and how do they go about getting Memorial tickets? Day weekend. The last weekend uh, in May. And uh, they can find everything at www.promotocross.com. There you go. Like any good promoter. And save me <laughs> a hay bale at Hangtown. I'll see you there, Prairie City. All right, Ralph. Get ready for the 50th anniversary of the Pro Motocross Championship.